Forging Honor podcast. I'm Jonathan George. And I'm Benjamin Jones. Here at The Forge, we explore what it means to live as Christian men. Along the way, we'll be doing weekly challenges to build character through action. We are by no means experts, just two young Christian men trying to make sense of a wild world. That's right. We do our best to learn and hope you'll join us on the journey. And if you want to get directly involved, go to forginghonor.com to find information on how to join our community. This is episode 26, Early to Bed, Early to Rise. All right, challenge wrap up time. As a reminder, challenges last for 10 days. That's Monday through Friday, uh, five days a week um, for two weeks. Uh, this last challenge was wake up at the same time every day. So, uh, Banjo, how'd you do? Uh, I did, uh, I did excellent. Uh, if I may pat myself on the back, Go for um, it. I did 10 out of 10. Uh, I woke up at five 30, uh, every morning, uh, in preparation. Um, I feel like we should say probably out the gate, uh, it's ironic that our, our episode about like being on time and waking up early is coming out late. That is funny. Um, <laughs> and uh, I feel like we should probably just give like a brief like word on why that's happening. Just, you know, we had technical apology issues folks. at the end of the day. Technical issues. Uh, and we're on a different different sound stage than we're uh, normally on. So if there's any like sounds different, that's why. Mm. Um but yeah, I woke up early. Uh, I tried to um, tried to expand my morning routine to make it a little bit more substantial um, and a little less ogreish uh, and Frankensteinian as mine tends to be. Um, but we can get more into that later. How did you do, JJ? Uh, I did pretty well. I did not hit the ten for ten like I had, I had hoped. Um, I got eight out of the ten. Um, that said, I on the weekend in between, you know, cause we do the two weeks, the weekend in between, I actually yeah. maintained. So I was getting up at 5 AM every day. Oh, nice. Um, so I actually did it for 10 days straight and then fell off in the last two days before we were supposed to record this. So we're, we normally record on a Saturday. We are recording this on a Monday. Um, but the, so I fell off. I did not do the last Thursday or the last Friday. Actually, I no. let me look at my, I think I actually missed the Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, cause I got up early on Friday. I have it all here in my little calendar. Uh, all that to say, um, I really enjoyed this challenge. Uh, it was really good for me, especially in the first week. I uh, felt like it really jump started my day. Um, the so what time did you pick? Where did you uh, five a.m. getting 5 up? Five a.m. Five a.m. Oh, so you were getting up before I was. Yes, uh, and I'll I'll get into why. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through kind of why some of this challenge, right? Because we present these challenges, um, and we talk about them for like five minutes. Uh, but there's Getting up at the same time every day is something that I've always wanted to do, but I've never successfully done for longer than a week at this point. And so I really want to work on this some more. Yeah. And there's multiple reasons for this. One, uh, studies just uh, according to the internet, you know, people like, uh, I think Andrew Huberman is someone that I've seen popping up on YouTube more and there's other, other folks out there, um, talking about just getting up at the same time every day and having that same morning routine, just really healthy for you. Uh, your body gets used to it. You get into regular rhythms. A big piece of that is going to bed at the same time as well. So even though we said get up at the same time every day, kind of an implied piece of that is you have to be going to bed at a decent time every day too. So that was a big part of it. I actually was going to bed like between 9 and 9.30 most of those nights. I think I had a couple where I was up past 10, but uh, those were much more rare because I was thinking to myself, oh, I have a challenge that I got to do. <laughs> um, so right. so I, I felt a lot better overall. That was healthy. Another big piece of it is when I get out of bed late, uh, I don't find the time to do the things I should be doing in the morning, things like my Bible reading and prayer. So I was much more consistent on those simply by getting up a little bit earlier. Um, and then the other piece of that is I, I like having a solid workout and a breakfast with my family, the breakfast at anyway, they don't work out with me, but a, a solid <laughs> breakfast with my family prior to work. And if I'm, if I'm waking up later than I want to, that's not going to happen. Uh, for as long of a period of time as I want it to happen. And the working out definitely won't happen if I don't get up that early. So the reason the reason I chose five o'clock was um, kind of working backwards from when I have to start my work day, along with what activities, if I want to be getting up at the same time every day, what's the earliest I need to start my day? Well, the earliest I ever have to start my day is on a Wednesday at, um, 
at 6 a.m. I have a Bible study. It takes me about 20 minutes to drive to. So getting up at five gives me the time to get up, do a quick workout, shower, read my Bible, and then hop in the car and go to this Bible study. Um, now there are other mornings where I'll get up, I'll be out the door a little bit earlier to go work out with some folks. Um, but that I don't see as like a, it's not an absolute necessity in the same way getting to that Bible study is, right? That's a very hard time. We start at six. So that right. necessitated getting up at five on a Wednesday. So getting up at the same time every day, got to get up at five. Um, right. So it's kind of working, working backwards from that. Most other days, I don't start work till like 7.30 or 8. Um, so I can theoretically get up at like 7 and just quickly get in front of a computer. But the fact of the matter is I want that time for workout and breakfast. A little extra time in there just to, you know, read something or go outside. I don't know. You couldn't plan all kinds of things. But is it is it easy for you to get up and out of bed? Or do you does it take a while for your motor to start moving? Uh, depends on the day, how much sleep I've had. I, I've, I would say I've been a morning person for most of my life, but mm -hmm. uh, I was talking, I was talking with my wife about it and she was commenting. Yeah. in the last really ever since we had, had our son, which was almost two years ago now, that's that in a big way is when I started to kind of switch into a little grog here of a, of a person in the morning. Um, that'll mess with your sleep schedule. Oh yeah. Uh, that, and then just increased responsibilities as you get older you just have more to do yeah um and i'm still at the age where while i have more to do i also still have friends i want to hang out with so trying to fit that time in you end up with late nights because you're working later into the day so you don't even get out of the house yeah. to hang out with anyone until it's like 7 or seven thirty. then you're taking two or three hours to sit and chat with with a buddy I mean, you know that adds up pretty quick in terms of the amount of time and mm -hmm. how much sleep you're not getting and then on top of that, if you're getting woken up in the middle of the night because your son is doing something, you know, that just, it just, it yeah. throws you off. So I've, I yeah. would have said like all through high school, I had no problem. I just snapped awake at five 30 in the morning. Um, I had cross country really? practice. I got so used to it for you know four or five years of just doing the same thing every day. Got very used to it. Yeah. Uh, even into college, I was pretty good about, I didn't get up uh, quite. I was up at about six most mornings, but I didn't have a problem getting out of bed. Um, so that was, yeah, yeah, again, it was, it was post birth of my son that really, uh, started to switch <laughs> that. But uh, the frustrating piece is I'm also, I didn't gain like the night owl tendencies. So I'm still incredibly tired oh. in the evenings. I'm just tired all the time now. Yeah. So You're just tired all the time. what about you? Uh, yeah. I am a, <clears throat> I have always been a night owl and, and never in my life once have I been a morning person. Um, at no time in my life have I thought the morning is a good time to get something done. Um, I subscribe to the uh, Ben Franklin rule, which is, uh, or not Ben Franklin, uh, it's somebody else. I can't remember who it is now. Anyway, it's not Ben Franklin, but early to bed, early to rise makes a man sleepy and weak in the eyes. Oh, that's funny. Um, that, ben Franklin, yes. it's a twist of his phrase, that's for sure. Indeed. Uh, I also uh, I also hold to the uh, Bertram Wooster uh, rule, which is that no event should happen the day uh, before 10 a.m. That's that's when things should really begin to to happen. Um, Interesting. But that's that's me. Sure. sure. Um, I like staying up late. Um, I like like long conversations into the night. I love I loved college because it was always you could find a conversation going until like three or four in the morning, um, and those were my favorite kinds of conversations. Um, and I get like one of my favorite feelings in college was to write that paper until like two in the morning, just like put some music on, make a cup of coffee, like the late night cup of coffee and paper. Oh, it's one of my favorite feelings. Um, but now I'm married and I have a job and I can't do those things anymore. And I must be an adult. Um, and so now I have a job where I'm, I'm getting into work at 715, um, but I have about a 40 minute commute. So I'm leaving at 630 every day. Um, and I like to, I want to be able to, to get everything done much like yourself. So I'm up, uh, every day at 530. Um, and that is, that is tough. Uh, I think it's one of those things, especially in winter time. I don't know what the, what the light schedule is down there, but for me, it is really, really tough to get up every day and go to work in the dark. And then to come home and by 4.30, you 
you know, I'm, I'm at home usually by three 30 and then by four 30, it's dark outside. Uh, that's, that's pretty that, tough. That's the winter season though. I mean, that's, that's not, yeah, that's not it, the same in the summer at all. No, it's not the same in the summer, but in the summer, I, it's a, it's a lot easier for me to wake up because about six o'clock, you know, or not even six o'clock, five o'clock, sometimes four thirty, sun's up. And right, I love getting right. up with the sun. You have such long days. You know? And so the circadian rhythm is so much easier. It's so much easier to just say, okay, I'm, I'm going now. Right. Um, but in wintertime, it's like, I don't know that, that the bed is warm. Uh, so it's tough. So, so where for do you, you think for you? Oh, uh, like I just you had a go. question based on that though, since you already get up at the same time every day, throwing the additional layer yeah. of the challenge, it sounds like you did a few things to try, to try and, um, get some benefits out of it. Um, but did you, did you see any major differences between like the last two weeks and the rest of your life? Um, the biggest difference that I saw was on the days where I was really on top of my game, I had a bigger breakfast. That was the thing that I tried to do. I tried to take breakfast more seriously and I tried to read my Bible more. And the thing that was, uh, I think the best about that is when I was eating a bigger breakfast, I was, I was more focused and less hungry and less cranky during the rest of the day. And then I would just have generally more energy. Um, the other thing I found is, um, there are, there was one day this week, there was one day last week where I had a snow day and I almost slept in because I thought, well, I, I have, it was a two hour delay. So I thought I could use the sleep, but I decided that I would get up because I had school the day after, uh, the, the, the delay. And I knew that if I didn't right. stay consistent, it was going to be that much harder the next You were going to throw yourself time. off. So, yeah. Yeah. I know how that goes. Uh, so that was the main thing. Um, the question I was going to ask you is where where do you feel the desire from for where did where, where hold on I'm going to say this right uh, we've been doing this for almost a full year now I can get full sentences out clearly and enunciated where do you feel there we go the desire to wake up early comes from is that like something that your your parents did your father did is that something that like someone you admire does or is it just something that you like this is a thing i should do i think it's a combination of factors um i've i've asked myself this question because i've thought to myself well if i just decided i'm not going to do morning activities my life would be a whole lot quote unquote easier than just get up at seven or whenever but the fact of the matter is um, I can either wake up the way I want to, or I can wake up the way someone else dictates. Hmm. And what, what I mean by that is, again, this is since having a, a son, he wakes up at any time between like 630 and eight o'clock. Like he, he has a wide range, right? Because he, you know, his sleep is, is much more dictated by, is there sunlight coming in the window? Are there sounds going like he's, he isn't, overwhelmed with tiredness the same way I am and can just sleep through anything at this point, right? He's going to wake right. up at all kinds of times, but also sometimes he's a late night because we've been driving to some church event or something, you know, he's just, he's tired. So he's going to sleep in a little more. So if I decide I'm going to sleep in, I'm, I have to bet on him not waking me up. Right. Right. So what happens is I'm like, Oh, I get to sleep in. And about, you know, six thirty or seven, I start hearing him playing upstairs in his room. I'm going, okay, that means I got to get up. Right. So now right. I have fitful sleep and I'm kind of being woken up in a way I don't want to be woken up. The other solution, the other option, or, it's, or, or maybe, um, another way I don't want to be woken up is I, I wake up late and Oh shoot, I got to get to work in 10 minutes. And so now I'm, yeah. now I'm rushed or I can decide here's how I want to wake up. Right. So therefore I have to wake up before six 30. So then, um, the question is why so early five o'clock and I've already talked to you about why I chose five. Right. Um, in theory, things would be a whole so lot. It's about, Sorry, go ahead. It's about dictating your day a it's little bit. Yes. Dictating. Yeah. Now that, that does come from something society has said about like, Oh, you should get up early. You should, you should tackle it early to bed, early to rise or, um, 
just the fact that I did that for so long and I got accustomed to it. Or, yeah. you know, I see, I see other people doing that and they're super productive with their time. I also know from personal experience that if I can start like the days where I get a solid workout in the morning or I get a shorter workout, but I take an hour to study before breakfast. Um, if I'm working on yeah. a certification or something for like in, in college for school or um, now just I'll, I'll read something because I have the opportunity to read now. If I do it in that first hour of the day, that can be incredibly productive for me. And I get a lot more from the hour, whether it's working out or reading or learning. I'm getting a lot more from that first hour, really from about 5.30 to 6.30. If I woke up at 5 and I, I, I kind of got going and then uh, I get into that hour, um, just the fact that it's so productive sets up my day for productivity. Yeah. Um, because it, there's something about a quick jump start in that way. Uh, the other piece of it is I know no matter what time I wake up, because I could I could wake up at 10 a.m. and it would be the same way. No matter what time I wake up, around 12 or 1 in the afternoon, my mind just takes a big slump. I just kind of I, I get right. really tired out of it. doesn't you matter if I woke up at, at 5 a.m. or 10 a.m. or sometime in between. Uh, my productivity is going to go down. My ability to focus goes down. Therefore, if I can get up earlier, because it doesn't matter, right? I'm going to have the same outcome in the afternoon. I might as well get up earlier and have more time before that slump to be productive. So that when that slump hits, I can afford to take a break and kind of lazily work through emails rather than trying to put my best tr than coding poorly or something in the afternoon, right? So how I how I structure my day starts to matter. And versus if I got up late and I, I woke up minutes before I need to start work on a weekday, um, then I, my, my productivity is going to go down through the whole day. I'm not going to have the same focus. I'm not going to have the same amount of time to focus. And then my afternoon slump is just going to be that much worse, really, because now I feel bad my, about myself. I haven't kickstarted my day in a good way. So does that, that that's a lot of things going on in there. Um, yeah, so that'll make no, sense. that makes sense, though. It makes sense. It reminds me of uh, <clears throat> Running and Being. Uh, Dr. Sheehan talks about... Um, Way back to like one of our first, earliest uh, episodes right there. Yeah, deep, deep cut. Uh, Dr. Sheehan talks about um, the tyranny of the clock, and he, and he talks about how uh, in, you know, he uses the example of basketball, and in the basketball game, you know, uh, a, a team who's on defense will apply the press, and the reason they apply the press is to throw another team off their rhythm. And he, he uses that to talk about the importance of, of having a daily rhythm and having a, a daily routine and especially a routine of play, one where you are, you're not being dictated by time. You're not being ruled by time, but you're, you're getting to get into kind of that flow state on a regular basis uh, and more at play. You're not letting the, the clock tell you what to do. And I hear that a little bit, it seems like in what you're doing with your day, um, in theory, which, I'm not perfect at this theory. at all, right? These are the fact right, of the matter right. is, these are all great ideas, great things. Right. And I, I think that they work because on the days that I do them, they do work. The problem for me is no matter how much I believe in them or how much I, I think they actually work for me, um, my, I, I'm, I'm easily distracted or I stay up too late or whatever it is. And, in, and right. then I can end up shooting myself in the foot when I should have just gotten up and gotten started. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, it, it's, it's, I think the whole getting up early in the morning is for a lot of people, it's a classic case of uh, do as I say, not as I do. Um, like right. it's definitely the case for me. I, I, I would say based, so I have a little of my notebook here and I, I have a habit tracker going on. Um, and based on looking back over the, cause I, I've been tracking my morning wake up time for about a month now. Um, and based on that, I have about a, uh, probably a, uh, maybe not quite 50, 50, more like a 40, 60 shot of actually getting up at the time that I said I would, um, right. which are not ultimately, you know, 40, 60, that's not great. I don't, if, if you're only winning 40% of the time, you know, that in the long run, that's not a win. Hey, baseball, you only got to hit three out of 10 to be average. Well, this isn't baseball. This is life. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess the way I think no, about I it is, you. you know, if I can if I can be uh, getting up consistently at that same time 
you know, a solid four days out of the seven, right? That's over 50%. Um, yeah. And that, that yeah, yeah. in my mind is a great foundation. Um, and that seems, yeah. that seems achievable, I guess, uh, relative to even the everyday. One thing I did notice was carrying it through on the weekend. Cause I just decided like, this isn't part of the challenge, but I'm going to do it on Saturday and Sunday in between that helped a ton going into the first, the, the second week. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I screwed myself over when I, it was a late night, I think on a Tuesday and that really messed with me. Um, I still managed to get up the next Wednesday, but I was, I was just dead within the next 48 hours. So let me ask you this. Do you think, you know, part of what we're doing here uh, at the forge, so to speak, is, you know, we're, we're aiming to be, you know, we're, we're aiming to figure out what is, what does it look like to be, uh, uh, you know, young Christian men who are living lives that are, you know, honoring to the Lord, you know? Um, And on the one hand, I think one of the things that we, you and I love doing is like celebrating those like kind of more traditional values that's like yeah get up drink the black coffee smoke the cigar you know uh go for the run Mm -hmm. uh you know be a man kind of a thing which i love that's all that's all well and good um but i there are some elements where i'm always i've always got my skeptics hat on just a little bit to ask the question like is this a is this a thing that i'm doing because it's a good thing to do, or is this a thing that I'm doing because uh, I've been told that this is a good thing to do, right. or am I doing this because like scripture tells me to do it? Because if scripture tells me to do it, well then I should do it. You know, that's right, just right. that's a flat out. And nowhere but does it, it say get it, up at five a.m. I don't, I can't think of one. Yeah, well, you know, so I, I can. I, I was thinking about this, and I'm glad you brought it up because I've been thinking about it a lot. There's a, a lot especially in Proverbs about being a wise man and the things the sluggard and the fool do, right? A sluggard turns in his bed as a door on its hinges. I've had my mornings where I'm turning in my bed as a door does on its hinges. My favorites, uh, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty comes like a thief in the night. That's a good one. I think that's what it is. And, And so that doesn't, that's not necessarily the get up early, get after it that we see sometimes, right. but I do think, um, it's anti slaw Exactly. So, so in that sense, and I've heard people say this about like, it doesn't really matter when you get your eight hours of sleep. It just matters that you get your eight hours at, over every 24, 24 hour cycle. You know, some people even advocate for like a four and four. Apparently people used to do that back in medieval times. Okay. Oh yeah. I've heard about um, that. Um, that's, that's I, nuts to me. I have no sources to back that up. I've just heard that. Regardless, yeah. let, let's just say that that's true, that you only you just need your eight hours at some point. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Maybe my eight hours can come between noon and 8 p.m. Okay, the fact of the right. matter is, I feel most productive early in the morning when the sun has just risen. Therefore, I should yep. endeavor to be awake at that time if I'm going to be my most productive, right? So, it and, and if we're anti-sloth here, then... I should not be going more than my eight or eight and a half hours, whatever you need. I should not be going more than that. And if I, if I'm sleeping at weird hours, I'm inclined to go more than that and cut into my time where I could be doing what I should be doing. Right. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm yeah, just kind I of, wanted to just kind I of tweak through the it. language a little bit. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> well, I was just thinking the, the whole idea of like, I, I get the eight hours thing and you know, the way I like to think of it is, there's always two ways to fall off a bridge. And on the, on the one hand, we've got things like, well, you could sleep too much. On the other hand, you could not sleep enough. Right. You know, like that's not good. You could stop caring and for yourself properly in that way. College students are the, known for that. <laughs> right. I was going to say, one of the things uh, to anyone who might be listening who is under the age of, say, 18 and is still in high school and middle school, a, I don't know why you're listening to these guys talk, but you know, you know welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. Second, um, anyone who has a child uh, who is of those ages, like the most important thing you could be possibly doing, short of like you know putting scripture in front of the kid, is making sure they go to bed at a decent hour. Right. Like the the nightmare stories that I am hearing right now of kids who are just not getting enough sleep. And the, and the amount of research that is showing just like how not getting sufficient sleep can raise every mental health 
problem and sink every grade and you know all those things just get more sleep people mm-hmm. that's all i'm saying get more sleep um now ultimately on the other side, though wait, so is that so is that a question of they're not of they're getting up too early or is that a question of they're not going to bed early enough it's both so what i see what i see most is um we have a a we have an anxious culture. Mm-hmm. We have a distracted culture, um, and we have a, uh, a a culture that doesn't know how to process or interpret any information or any emotion that is given to it. And so there are negative things that are happening. There are stressful things that are happening in kids' lives. Um, there are there are classes that they're taking that they don't understand why they're taking. Mm-hmm. There are things happening in their life that they don't understand. All these things, and they do what most people naturally do, which is they revert to, uh, frankly, addiction cycles to, to cope. Right. Uh, they're either on their phones or on their video games or talking with friends or, or whatever. Um, and they're just not going to sleep Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. the really tricky thing about going to sleep is you have to sit with yourself in the quiet and in the dark long enough so that your brain will shut off. And if your brain doesn't shut off, you're just longing to go back to whatever it is that like eases that psychic burden. Right, right. Distracts you. know, you. that mental burden. Um, and so on top of that, they've, they've got, they're going to bed too late and then they're waking up freakishly early because that's what we do here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think there's that. And I think if, if we as, you know, you're a parent of a, of a small child and I would like to be a parent one day, I think we've got to think about, well, what is, uh, what is a godly idea of sleeping and waking? Because we, we, uh, in all that you do in word or in deed, do everything as unto the Lord Jesus Christ, uh-huh. is what Paul tells us. So that means that our waking needs to be unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and our sleeping needs to be unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I, I greatly admire the men who I know, and I know many of them who are like, I get my four hours and I'm done. And I'm like, I don't know how you do that. Right. Um, and, but I don't think that's wrong necessarily. Like they're just up. That's just the amount of sleep that they need. Um, but then I see other people who are like, I haven't slept in, you know, three days. I'm like, you need get sleep. some sleep. You yeah. yeah. You know, so I don't know. I think we got to figure out that difference a little bit. Or a little at least bit. think about it. There's definitely a balance and different people need different amounts of sleep. I wish I needed less. You know, that, it's just the fact of the matter. If I could operate on six hours of sleep, that'd be great. Um, but seven and a half seems to be about where my body is is happy. Um, I know some people that they go to bed, yeah, at 11 and they wake up at 430 or something like that. And I, I mean, I know, I actually know one guy specifically I'm thinking of right now who does that. So I'm not even exaggerating there. And it's just, it, it's surprising to me. Now I will say, I, I think in the long run, that's that's probably going to be a net um, a net negative going on there. I Just because of the periods of my life where I've been, I was doing that, especially, you know, like sophomore year of college where I was just as busy as I could possibly be. Um, and that just, that was detrimental in, in, long, in the long run for my health in terms of injuries I was getting and that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, I, there's definitely a point where you're exactly right. We need to be cautious of trying to get, get away from sleep. Um, but I'm not entirely sure where, where the balance is there. I, I, I think some of it, I'm going to go on a tangent here. I've had to try and reframe the expectations in my life from a single day, especially yeah. as I've gotten older. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I think That's a good point. because one most people work a a job that requires them for a certain number of hours every day whether that's eight hours or 10 hours for some people if you're working on odd schedules or 12 hours and you work you know three four days a week instead of the normal five or six you know so you have a a range of hours that you are dedicated to someone that is paying you to do a task okay so those are gone boom you have if you have a family or you have uh, a church or you've got community events whatever it is you have another set of hours that are taken out of your day. Then you got to fit sleep in somewhere. And then you're on top of that, 
you're a social human being. You have desires. You have things you want to do. Um, maybe you want to uh, play board games or play video games or you just want to go hiking. I don't know. You, you've got a, you've got a whole set of things that you want to do and you're trying to fit those in on top of the many, many other things that you want to do. And as I've gotten older, I've just had to accept that a lot of those things are not going to happen every day. I'm not going to have an hour yeah. every day to read the book I want to read or to sit and chat with a friend that I want to sit and chat with. That's just not going to happen. Um, and reframing that for myself and just realizing, okay, if I can change my expectation from every day I get to sit and and see a buddy or every day I get to watch an episode of my TV show I'm watching or every day I get to do this thing to once a week or even once a month, if I can reframe that expectation, I can suddenly, I, there's a lot more free time in my day. Now that sounds depressing to some people because they're saying, oh, you're not getting to do what the things that you really want to do. Um, I would ask, are, are the things that I want to do really the best use of my time um, always? Or or should I look and, and try to understand if just because I want to do it, there are plenty of things I want to do that are definitely not the best use of my time. Yeah. So, I think there's also like a, there's a moderation element to it. So sure. there's like a, like a feeling, something that I'm working through is I, I there's always things I feel like I should be doing. Mm -hmm. I always should be working on this project or I should be uh, writing this thing or I should right, be, right. I, I, I just, I just books I need to be reading. Why am I not reading the books? Um, like uh, I had to be careful when I go into Barnes and Noble every once mm -hmm, in a while, mm -hmm. because like, I'll just get totally overwhelmed by the amount of books that I haven't read. You're just like, um, Oh, I got to read that one. And that one, this great classic that for, somehow escaped me. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just walk out of Barnes and Noble depressed. Like how can I, there's too many books and there's not enough time. There's just too many. It feels um, that way. It definitely feels that it way. Feels that way. But I get that way in like my day to day life and, and all these things. And one of the things I'm I'm trying to shift into is a mindset of the Lord is in control, mm -hmm. uh, and and He has uh, He has given me certain desires, and He's given me certain like He's we could say He's put certain things on my heart, um, and each day is enough for its own troubles. Right, you right. Know, each day has enough troubles of its own, but each day has its own troubles. You for know, sure, so it's like, what's sure. the thing that what's the thing I have to do today? You know. Um, so, you know, lately I'm, I'm, I'm dipping back into a phase of like, um, I'm, I'm playing more, a, a few more video games than I have been. I took mm -hmm. a break for a while and dipping back into that. And I'm also writing like shorter pieces instead of trying to write these big, long hunking things. Mm -hmm. Um, and the little voice at the back of my head is like, you're not using your time well, like you're running out of time. You need right, to be doing right. this. And I, I've, I've been trying to say like, no, this is this is the time that I have for this. I get to make use of the time in this way. And for me thinking about, you know, it's funny, um, waking up at five 30 every day. I, I think because I was more aware of it this week, I was more aware of like, this is not when I want to wake up every day. Like if it were me, I would probably be waking up much closer to like seven or eight o'clock having a really slow morning. And then like sitting down to just like, you know, in a dream world, right? Write write my great American novel from nine o'clock to eleven. You know, only stop you for get lunch two hours then, in, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's right. Great, you know. great idea, I, banjo. Great idea. Yeah, you know, retirement's going to be a lot of fun for me. Um, but you know, it, it's just like if I was structuring my day, even in the way that I would work in my own imagination, um, I would structure it differently. Mm. I would structure it very differently, and I need to be okay with well, this is, you know, this is what God has called you to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to your point, like, uh, I'm in a job where I'm like, I don't get to control my schedule. I don't get to control what classes I'm teaching when. Um, it's like, that is assigned to me. And I need to make the best use of the time. Like I'm called to that amount of time. I need to make the use of it. Um, and even within those parameters, I have to be okay with the fact, like, you know, some kid, uh, has a totally unrelated tangent to what we're going to talk about, but it's way more interesting than what I was going to talk about. So yeah, I'm going to do uh, a, a day's lecture on the philosophy of, I don't know, um, modern American humanism. That's pretty interesting. Might be even useful. 
Um, but it just depends, you know, right. so I'm trying to find that balance between like regulation and moderation and trusting, trusting God to be in charge of the whole thing. Yeah, it, it's tough. And kind of what you said about if you had your ideal day, here's the time you would wake up and here's what you would do. I've thought about that. And my problem is I always come to the conclusion that I wish I just needed less sleep. Yeah. Um, and that's not how God made humans. There are right. those people that have insomnia and I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. But also that sucks for them. They're always tired. You know, there's, <laughs> I don't know, like on the one hand, I'm like, oh yeah, no, you don't need sleep. Oh, but you do. You really do. Um, no, I'm the same way. I read about Dostoevsky and he's like, he had epilepsy and right. people are like, and it probably helped him write his novels. I'm like, dang it. God, I wish I, That's wish what I had I'm it. Yeah, no, no, you don't need that. Um, <laughs> no, I don't want that. And, be. and so ultimately that, in, in its own sense as a direct rebellion against the nature that God has placed on me. Yeah. And and so I yeah. have to be very cautious of that because I'm thinking to myself, man, I wish I could go to bed at like midnight or one and then wake up at three 30 or four and feel great. And yeah. start my, you know, um, but I'm not crazy enough to cut sleep completely out because I do actually like the feeling of having just slept and, and the feeling of being <laughs> in bed. Like it's great, but then I'm like, I, I really, I don't, do I really need seven and a half, eight hours? I don't know. It just seems unreasonable. Why would God do that? You know, it's just, it's just, so it, it's yeah. a, it's a direct rebellion. Um, even though nowhere in the Bible, it says, here's the exact amount of sleep you need. It, it, it is clear that there's wisdom required and that God has put these physical constraints on us. So for that, you know, I, I, I think back to, uh, the lecture that we had at, at covenant on, from Kavik on finitude. Uh, oh, which for our audience, great one. if you don't know who Kelly Capic is, look him up. Uh, you can find his lecture on the internet. So I th I'm sure Covenant has that on their YouTube channel or, or on their podcast history. And then he also has a book on the subject. And that was hugely encouraging. And I constantly think back to that lecture whenever I'm thinking I, going down this path. So was the, I think that was that was probably your freshman year, right? Uh, it was freshman or sophomore. Um, okay, so I, I think it was your freshman year because I remember being there for that lecture on my visiting day. You know, I bet there's a reason they had him uh, do the do yeah. the talk when everyone was. Visiting. It was <laughs> super helpful for me. I it, like yeah, like yourself. That's something I think about all the time. Which, funnily enough, shortly after that lecture was the first cross country practice where JJ and I would have met yeah. the first time. Well, you stayed in my room before. That's true. So I guess practice. I met you before. But I had I honestly election. forgotten that. And then you show up. <laughs> so I'm so, I'm a forgettable, uh, you know, forgettable face. <laughs> just another face You're in like, the crowd. You're like, who's that 12 year old? old. <laughs> no, but uh, I think, yeah, learning to appreciate God created us as finite beings. Um, Jesus slept. Exactly. Um, Quite a bit. In actually. fact, he got very tired but he stayed awake through the night and his disciples slept and then he reprimanded them for it. So, you know, where does that put us? I don't know. I always, <laughs> I always like it when I like the part where he falls asleep in the boat. Right. And he's still asleep during the waves. Like I, that's just one of those great, funny, funny scenes in the gospel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, and yeah. anyway, kind of, we're, we're going all over the place here. Um, but yeah, learning, learning to accept that side of it and then learning, okay, how do we the most wisely structure our day around the fact that you need sleep? And then, you know, we have the advantages of, of being able to run studies on large numbers of people that then tell us, hey, you need this much sleep and it's better to get up at these times, you know, those, those kinds of things. And just learning to take that advice into account. I don't know. I, I think this was a good, good experiment. I mean, I've tried it before but it was a, another good experiment and just getting up at the same time. I think the most beneficial right. thing for me ultimately was the fact that I was thinking ahead because there was a challenge going on and yeah, therefore I was going to helpful. bed at a decent time. So if I was going to re gonna redo this challenge, routine? I would probably restructure it as go to bed at the same time every day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Which in some ways is harder. Oh yeah. I, or at least be getting ready for bed by a certain time. I don't know. You come up with some way to give yourself, you know, that 30 minute window. But the, yeah. yeah, that would be in some ways more difficult because it definitely feels like the end of your day can be taken away from you in a way that the beginning of the day cannot, right? No one books anything yeah. except for the, you know, the occasional Bible study, or maybe you're meeting a friend for coffee early, but who books something prior to 8am, right? It's very rare. Psychopaths. 
the the only time that I've had work functions prior to 8 a.m. are when I was working with a remote team for a few months. And so they were going to bed yeah. and I was getting up. So I had to be up for like a 7.30 meeting that lasted 30 minutes. And then I would log off, go get breakfast, and then get back to work, you know, around 8.30 or 9, right? Yeah. And so that that was an interesting period. But the point is, yeah, most people, you, you just, you have this nice, if you, the earlier you get up, there's just more time to yourself. But as soon as you get off yeah. work, um, or maybe you have work late, or and then you get off work, and then your friends want to hang out, or you've got stuff you got to get done, you got chores around the house, whatever it is, right? The, the end of your day just can get sucked away from you. You have very little control over it. Um, even if you think you do, you, you have less control over the end of your day than I think you realize. I think that's the great illusion of, of a challenge like this or like the scheduling things, which are, I'm not saying that they're not useful. They are useful. Um, but the great illusion of them is that you control your time and that, like you have this, uh, yeah, you can, you can dictate what happens. And I think there is value to like taking dominion of the day. Like this is the time allotted to you. So like make the most, like, you know, uh, make the most of it towards glorifying God. Like that's, that's your purpose. You know, I think ultimately for. back to the question of why 5 a.m. For me, yeah. it's, yeah, I want to tell myself it's so I can glorify God better and live my life better. Right. So I can get up and read scripture, but it might just be about mm -hmm. the control. Right. Because if I, if I right. get up early enough, I feel like I have a couple hours that I control. Right. I don't have work telling me what mm -hmm. to do. I don't have my friend. I mean, as much as I want to hang out with my friends, I don't have other people right. telling me what to do. I don't have my family saying, oh, this needs to happen. Right. Those are all good things. But I feel like I need to maintain control of like the first couple of hours of my day somehow. Maybe I do, maybe yeah. I don't. Yeah, things to think about. Any final thoughts you'll take away from this lesson? Other than I think generally it's, it's healthy. Um, I don't know, that's a big one. Are you going to keep doing it? I'm going to keep attempting. Keep attempting. Yeah, I, I, I have gone back and forth about the 5 a.m. piece. I think I could probably be just as happy with a 6 a.m. Um, and then getting up earlier on, you know, Wednesdays for that Bible study I go to, uh, then it wouldn't be the same time every day, but it would be, it, it's better to have a consistent time and occasionally get up earlier probably than it is to have a inconsistent late time. Yeah, um, I would think so. So there are reasons, uh, to go five versus six versus seven. So I, I, I would think about that, um, as far as maintaining a consistent time or a consistent 30 minute window of some sort i think that's something i want to stick with yeah. what about you i mean you're working that you have you have an earlier time you have to be somewhere than i do yeah no i'll I'll keep to it I, I it's been helpful for me to have this i think whatever it is i do i need an hour prep time sure at sure. least before i'm able to feel like okay i'm good to go yep so for me i think this will be whatever my routine ends up being in life at least for Monday through Friday, there will always be an hour of prep time and, and an hour window. I'm like, well, whatever it is I need to do today, I'm getting up Has this far in advance. Yep. So that'll be me. And I think the final thing for me is just like, it's just a reminder of, um, it's not my day. Right. It's the Lord's day. Well, not the, not the Lord's well, day. That's not, except but, every day. I but mean, it is the Lord's day. I know day. what you mean. Every day is in its own way even if it's not the quote unquote Sabbath. It's the day the Lord has made. Yes. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Even if we're not glad that we're up at 530, we should be glad that it's the, it's the day that God has made. And I think that's all, that's a hard thing to do. The older I get and the more aware of the responsibilities of a day that I get. But that's, I think probably all the more reason to trust in, in God's grace and, and in his goodness. Definitely. All right, on to the next challenge. As a reminder, challenges last for 10 days. That's Monday through Friday for two weeks. However, we did release this one or this episode will be coming out late. So um, if you, I, I'm probably only going to focus on eight or nine of the days. And besides, this challenge is a little bit different because we are coming up on actually this, the end of this two weeks, it'll, it will have been one full year of Forging Honor being a thing. 
And we thank Woo! the the few listeners that have stuck with us for that full year. We're we're excited. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm I'm just I was telling my wife, Banjo, I'm just so happy that we completed a full year. Regardless of whether it was three listeners or 30 listeners or 300, you know, we had different different ratings every week and blah blah blah. That's fine. I'm just happy that Banjo, you and I stuck with it for a full year. I, I'm yeah, it's just a great it's a great feeling. So that's and honestly, this has been like it's been really fun to keep up. Like I haven't been able to keep all of my relationships from college like as well maintained as this one, I think. And this sure. one has been because of the podcast, we've been able to keep in touch so much better. So I've appreciated it quite a bit. It's been a ton of fun. So I am looking forward to in two weeks from now, we will have our first ever anniversary episode. It's going to be great. Um we will be announcing some changes to the format of the podcast. We're going to have some fun new ideas, uh, hopefully be having on more guests, all kinds of things. In the meantime, between, We're dreaming big. between now and then, the challenge is this. The challenge that everyone tries to do every year. Reflect on the previous year for about a week, and then look ahead to the next year. There are some caveats to that uh, that we've talked about. One, as you're reflecting, think about... Um, don't just reflect on the things you did you did, or the, the items on your bucket list you checked off. Think about, okay, did I become more of the man I wanted to be? Um, if so, how? If not, how? And then as you're looking ahead, uh, write out in your, in your journal, or your honor journal, as we call them, um, where you want to be, who you want to be, but also write out who you don't want to be. Like, what, what will happen if you don't work on the things you want to work on? Right, so set up a positive and a negative on both ends of that. Um, Banjo, does that make sense? Yep, yep. Uh, so there's one one side that's uh, aspirational and one that's maybe more uh, things things one wishes to avoid. Right. I, I think the reason for that, both as you're looking back and looking ahead, is if you one if you write out the negatives that you want to avoid, or you you write out the negatives that you have done in the last year right? You, you give yourself some stakes, right? Because if you just say, I want to be a better husband a year from now, what, I mean, what does that mean? What are the stakes if you don't do that, right? How do you, how do you even measure that, right? There's different. So I think that's part of it is if you give yourself some stakes of if I don't consistently, you know, read my, read my Bible every day, just as an example, where will that put me in a year from now? If I do, where will that put me in a year from now? How did I do in the last year on that? You're right. Th those are the questions I'm I'm looking to ask, um, as opposed to just do this thing better, because ultimately you and I know you set New Year's resolutions doesn't happen. I'm trying to get more concrete, mm -hmm. more more down to earth. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's a good I think it's a good plan. We'd also love to see if you guys want to post on on Instagram or Twitter or social. Uh, sorry, X. Um, well, that's already changed. Uh, sorry, my bad. Um, Facebook, what have you, uh, we would love to see like, what were the challenges that you were most interested in? What, uh, what didn't work? What, what ones would you like us to do, uh, in the coming year? Um, we would, we would love to, uh, be able to interact with you, the listener, dear listener, uh, and much more. It's a two way street, this podcasting thing. It's a relationship in theory, we're mostly trying. We're trying. in theory, <laughs> we're trying very good. Well, this any final notes before we No. Do we need to any final clarifications? Other than this any more chances I can stumble over my words in awkward fashion. Oh, plenty of chances for you, Banjo. Um, <laughs> but this marks the end of a of a full year of forging honor. So that that does mark uh, a a New Year's resolution for me. I just wanted I, my my goal resolution? with this was make it at least one year. And we have done that. Make it I'm one very year. happy. That was ambitious. That was that was, that was my that was goal. really my only goal. I haven't even set a listener goal. I just wanted to make That's it great. one year of us recording and regularly getting episodes out. I'll be honest. I think my goal was like six months. Banjo, we have doubled that. Good job. And we have doubled it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, it's been an honor. Lots of journaling in the next uh, two weeks. And I'm looking forward to our New Year's episode slash anniversary episode. Uh, it should be good. Sounds good. We will see you then. This has been the Forging Honor Podcast. Music and production is by Elliot George. For more information about what we do or to learn how to get involved, visit our website at forginghonor.com. 
If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, subscribe, and give us a rating to bring others into the Forging Honor journey. On our website, you'll find information on how to do the challenges alongside us, as well as links to the many resources we mentioned in the show. And we do make a small amount for many purchases you make through our website links, so thank you in advance. Thanks for taking the time with us today. We hope you'll take up the work alongside us and join us in the task of forging honor. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.